Welcome to HortTube. My name is Jim Putnam. Excited for this tour video. We're going to do a, a couple of tour videos here uh, at least uh, at a friend of mine's house who is a retired landscape designer. This is about a 30-year project at this point, and I was involved in the very, very beginning of it. You're going to see some uh, sidewalk work that I did here. We're going to see um, a retaining wall that I built here about 30 years ago. Uh, it's off of a very busy uh, road out here. This is one of those, uh, it was a, uh, a like a five acre country lot a long time ago, back when I was working here 30 years ago. Raleigh has decided to grow very rapidly and um, this is area is kind of surrounded. So you may hear some background noise uh, from some cars passing by. But as we get further back into this property, it's, you know, it, th that, that goes away. This is a, this was when I first got here, there was nothing here except for uh, the, tr the larger trees that you see obviously here 30 years ago, they were smaller at that time, but the understory had been completely cleared out uh, of here by the previous owner. He had just cl cl clear cut basically everything to the ground except for the uh, trees uh, were here. So when, when we got here, the house looked very different. It's been completely, completely remodeled and you could just see the house directly right here. And so we're going to see all the details that have been done during that time right here in the, uh, where you're coming in on the driveway, there's a Caria japonica. This one is called Pliniflora. It's got the double flowers on it. It just cascades out here uh, onto the sidewalk or onto the uh, driveway uh, in a parking area that Steph is standing in there with the uh, with the camera. We start to start to move this way. Uh, you get more uh, more and more impact from this entry planting. She's got lots and lots of details here. We're not going to go through every detail. We're shooting this March 22nd. And so we're kind of in between some of the early, early flowering things. Flowering, as an example, uh, you know, there's a quince here, which is about finished. And the early perennials are the perennials just starting to wake up. So some of the very early perennials like hellebores are in full bloom, but other, other later summer perennials haven't even started to wake up. Uh, as an example, this Japanese maple you know, 30 years ago was newly planted and now it's 25 feet tall. It's a beautiful, perfect placement uh, for that tree. The tree to the left of it is um, uh, Chinese fir, uh, cunning hamia, uh, a few of these in the uh, neighborhood. Uh, really amazing tree. Th those things will take dry shade. Uh, you know, the Japanese maple will too. You know, you really don't have to water any of these things. She uses a lot of conifers in the garden and conifers you know keep a good winter interest a lot of the a lot of the perennials that go to sleep a lot of our shade plants you know either go to sleep retreat to the ground uh, in the winter times where they come up and they bloom and then they kind of go back you know into the ground things like trilliums and things like may apples you know they just retreat you know so if you have a shade you know, a shady space like this, where you have high shade and you can get some light in, all of these conifers work really well to kind of hold it together. So there's, you know, all these soft textured conifers in here, like this Camia cypress, this, uh, this is that feeling blue, uh, uh, feeling blue Deodore cedar. We have one of these at the house and sometimes I'll see these staked up and weeping eight or 10 feet tall. Uh, ours is kind of crawling across the ground at the house in Raleigh. Uh, this one is uh, somewhere in between, about three feet in height, uh, something like that. She uses uh, containers, and what I want you to get from this, these containers here, is the containers are different sizes, they're different heights, there's different height things within the containers, so some of the things are spreading, some of the things are upright and vertical, uh, and it creates... Uh, even in this garden right here where you didn't, she didn't want to put anything here that was going to block the view, you know, of the entryway back here, you still have various texture, you have various heights, you have various growth, di different types of growth habits. She really doesn't have to mulch here at all. She's getting free pine straw, free leaves, and then there are ground covers, shade ground covers throughout the garden. So the, the maintenance here is is kind of done naturally and just kind of has to blow off the sidewalks and blow off the uh, you know the paths and that kind of thing. Uh, but I really I really love how this entryway uh, is put together with lots and lots of interesting things and kind of invites you into the rest of this garden. This is a Chinese snowball viburnum uh, 
it's not an invasive uh, plant. Uh, we have one of these in our garden. This one's getting a little more shade than you'd actually think it would take, but the trees are limbed up pretty good in here. And so it's getting some, you know, getting some good bright light uh, and they're just starting to form and they, or they have this green coloration, like a lot of white flowering viburnums and hydrangeas, you know, they'll start out with this little bit of a green hue and then it'll just get brighter and brighter and brighter and these inflorescences will just get bigger and bigger. So she's using a lot of dwarf conifers in these containers and I won't name them all, but it's a combination of false cypresses, cryptomeria, yews, uh, Western arborvitae, uh, a, uh, and then again, I think I said cryptomeria already, and then uh, uh, false cypresses and false yews as well, like Japanese, uh, Japanese plum yews. Another Japanese plum yew over here, I think this is Duke Gardens. It gets about three feet in height and kind of spreads as wide as you want to let it spread. But again, these conifers are kind of holding this space together while other things are coming and going. Right, so there's, uh, as an example of that, very fragrant daffodils in this container. Uh, I think these are Thalia is the variety on these. Uh, and within that container, uh, there's a daylily coming up, ground covers in there. So that thing's gonna be changing all the time. Conifer sitting in here in the background, you know, it's the same year round. There's some irises coming up along here that are in bloom. We've got lots and lots of early irises, uh, the little, uh, lavender color one there but there's other perennials that will pop up uh, in there so then uh, this pergola was built and this carolina jessamine is on the top of it this is a, a native uh, vine fragrant flowers it's obviously in bloom now right here in the middle in the middle of march this was this entryway was a solid concrete sidewalk so when we got here when she when when her and her husband bought this house. You know, it was again, it was just a high shade trees and you know, the house has been uh, changed quite a bit over the years, but this was just a concrete sidewalk that led to the front door over here. So we came in and rather than take the concrete sidewalk out and come back in with it some sort of stone or something, we actually lifted the concrete up, broke it into large slabs and then rearranged it in here to look like a natural stone path. Uh, in the 30 years since, it has moss growing in it and uh, some other small growing perennials, a few, um, you know, a few things that creep up on the edge that kind of soften, you know, so soften the edge, a lot of ground covers. Uh, there's a bench, you know, obviously a bench under here. Uh, she has a dog and there's a little, there's a little, there's a little fence system here. Uh, that can be closed uh, so the dog can uh, have a space here around this uh, front patio. Uh, but come on in. Uh, this is a, a really amazing space. But again, when we broke this thing up and put it back in place, uh, it really completely changed this, sit you know, th this sitting area. She's got covers on her chairs back here because we're in peak pine pollen season so that's the reason that you see covers on, on anything you see covers on it's uh, uh the pine pollen is just outrageous for about a month here uh in in, Nor in north carolina and a lot of the southeast again a great use of conifers uh throughout this garden low growing uh grasses and grass like plants uh, so there's a you know using carex this is sweet flag here but she's using carex uh, some, there's some variegated uh, vinca uh, right there. And again, there's a lot of perennials that are just coming up. This is Farfugium. There's, there's I think, three different Farfugium coming up uh, in that area. They won't bloom until fall, but the, uh, the foliage will look beautiful until then. Obviously, there's an azalea uh, blooming up here uh, on the hill. Uh, that bank that's going up and lots of azaleas uh, back in that area. But I always loved this space. You know, even 30 years ago when we finished this, I knew, you know, this was going to be, you know, turn out to be a fantastic space. There's an Edgeworthia here, so it's just finished flowering, and the leaves are just coming out on it now. So by the time this leaves out, this will be a big, you know, full uh, space in it. She's got a dog that's going to give us a little bit of feedback back here. So my friend has an amazing ability to uh, have complementary textures. Uh, 
you know, the, le- the, the, the size and shapes of the leaves, you know, plants being vertical, plants being spreading, the, the different shades of green and gold, uh, and they, you know, amazing how she can put things together that complement you know, complement one another where you get vertical elements and spreading elements and then again different foliage types and then different shades of green uh, together that just look fantastic. Again, we're not necessarily here, you know, at the peak, you know, at the, we're, we're in between the early flowering things and, you know, the, 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 the late spring and summer, you know, where, you know, the garden looks probably looks very, very different than it does right now. There are a lot of garden art in the, uh, in the uh, 30 years that this garden has been underway, uh, they have collected a ton of pieces uh, that are all interesting and they're definitely all part, you know, of this garden. Another uh, really beautiful cryptomeria uh, right here. Uh, another Cameocyparis right here. Again, all, almost all of these conifers are soft to the touch as well. You know, not, pr- not prickly ones. If we head around a little further in, again, you can see how this was broken apart and then reconstructed. And then, you know, from there, you know, we turned left to go around this part of the house and used a slate. Uh, it must be slick at times because she's got some, uh, uh, got some pads uh, on it. There are lots of, there are tons of hellebores in this garden, all blooming now. They've kind of hybridized one another, so there's lots of different, lots of different colors and shades. Uh, on those ferns popping up everywhere. We're not here for peak fern, for sure. Some of the evergreen ones are up, but some of the ones that go to sleep in the winter are just starting to, to come back to life. This is a really underused plant. This is Lunicera nidida, or um, uh, box leaf honeysuckle. Or, you know, it looks like a boxwood, but it's actually in the honeysuckle family. Not invasive at all. It's a great textured plant. It will take some light shade uh, that some other uh, leafy evergreens won't, but looks fantastic uh, in this space. There's a really nice Pieris uh, japonica right here. And where ours got damaged uh, the other night, um, she probably was a couple degrees colder because she's out in the suburbs than us. All of, we lost all of our new foliage on our Pieris to uh, 28 degree night. It was probably, I think she said 26 here, but it was unharmed because she's got this canopy uh, up above everything. It's keeping the frost from actually settling uh, in this garden, which is kind of interesting. You know, there's a lot of winter protection. These plants being so tightly compacted in here and under this sh- this evergreen uh, pine story above us, you know, are protecting one another. So the little natural stone path comes off of the uh, concrete, uh, the broken up concrete sidewalk that we had created and comes up a bit of a ramp here Again, great use of uh, conifers uh, in, the, in this garden and uh, garden art back here. I think you can see the mermaid uh, back here in the background. This was a retaining wall that uh, I built 30 years ago. Uh, it starts right here. There's some steps that went in right next to it to create a path. This garden is acres and acres of woodland trails. Uh, there's a trail map she left out for us. Uh, that's how big of a a big of a space this is, but again, this natural stone uh, path was put in along the side of the house, creating a little bit of a patio space uh, for, a t- for a table and chairs. And then the uh, dry stack retaining wall went in. And in the 30 years, you know, you got moss growing on it now, uh, some plants that she's plugged into it here and there, some ground covers that she has up in the bed are creeping down uh, in here. This is definitely a garden where you know, things are put in and then they're allowed to fight it out a bit. Uh, there's just an incredible collection. You know, this is a, you know, a little tiny daffodil here, slightly larger one there, other things coming up in and around anything that's here. So one thing is gonna finish and another thing is just going to start. Uh, lots of larger growing ferns. Uh, uh, there's some rhodia, which is a, an evergreen a uh, hosta, hosta-like plant. She has deer here, so she's got to think about, she's got to think about deer and the uh, rhodia are deer resistant where hosta would, would get eaten to the ground. Uh, most of the hosta she has are in containers and things I've noticed. Uh, the wall, again, continuing down through here, uh, there's a dwarf uh, forsythia. It's about finished, almost finished flowering now, but it's great coloration up against this uh, you know, another uh, Cameocyphorus that's planted 
uh, in the retain, you know, just above the retaining wall. But the wall's held up really well, I think, for for 30 years <laughs> that it's been it's been in use in this garden. Within this sidewalk right here, uh, there are holly ferns. This is the the larger growing fern you're seeing here. Again, it's been it's just coming out of winter, so it's going to look really nice and fresh here in the next uh, few weeks. They're Japanese painted ferns just growing in the cracks uh, between the stones. Uh, there's some oxalis uh, that's you know trying to fight it out uh, with everything else. Uh, there's there's some sedum growing in the cracks right here. Uh, of course we have the mo you know there's moss in there and uh, there's some strawberry begonias uh, you know fighting it out in here. There's some toad lilies that are just waking up so a perennial you know, just waking up uh, right there. There's a hel there's a hellebores uh, growing back here behind these chairs. There's even a poet's laurel that's coming up, you know, uh, in in the stone here. So this the stone uh, the stone patio is alive, uh, and it's a, it's absolutely amazing to me how many uh, how many things are fighting it out uh, within these. Uh, within these rocks and they're suppressing the weeds. There really aren't any actual weeds here. Everything is, uh, um, everything is covering the ground and preventing that. So that's just the entryway uh, into this garden. And again, it's, this is many acres of, uh, of woodland garden here, but that's just coming off the driveway and going right around the uh, front of the house. And so many materials have been used. Uh, again, I'm happy my retaining wall is holding up 30 years later, uh, like it is, and it's got lichen and moss and you know, all kinds of things growing in and around it. Uh, and it looks, looks great. Nothing's pushed it over yet. Uh, so ho hopefully it'll last another 30 years um, uh, in this space. So thank you guys for following along with the channel. Again, we'll bring you some more content uh, from this garden um, during the uh, 2023 growing season as other things wake up and, uh, and start to show off in this garden. Thanks for watching.